We have the Costa Rica Vice President coming in today. So she was supposed to come to the Goober Awards last year, November, but couldn't make it. And she vouched that, you know, she will definitely come to Ghana at some point. So I've been working with UNFPA, coordinating some parts of her visit. Tomorrow we are going to Cape Coast, Elamina Castle and Asin Mansour. And then on Thursday, we go to Akwemufie, which luckily she knows the Akwemu King, our dinner hall, because they were part of the journey to Costa Rica with me last year um, when we went to visit her um, in, in Costa Rica. So it's a very exciting time. She was also supposed to be awarded with the UNFPA boss. So they're both coming in town and they both will be awarded. There's a high level meeting, which they will be presented their Guba Yasantua award. So very exciting, busy time. So I'm going to the office. I had to buy some reefs and some schnapp for the Kings to do our traditional stuff. So I'm delivering that now and then we'll head off to the airport to meet her. I've got their citations, the award and the reefs behind me that is going to be used for the ceremonies. So we're now at UNFPA. Hello, let's say. See me. What time are we leaving to the airport? Okay. The kings and queens of Akwemo from the eastern region waited patiently for the vice president to land. One of the Queen Mothers was Nana Ajwa Awendo. So the flight has landed with the Vice President of Costa Rica and the UNFPA board. We're waiting for them to hit the red carpet so that we can greet them. We have the Aquamupia Kings and Queens who have attended who are doing an amazing I was a little bit anxious seeing Her Excellency Epsi Campbell in Ghana. I wasn't sure whether she would remember me. <laughs> and Dr. Kanim, a medical doctor who currently serves as the executive director of the UNFPA. As tradition demands, we have to hold our to welcome you to Ghana as our custom demands. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. A libation ceremony was performed as part of their welcoming. Libation is a drink poured out as an offering to our ancestors. Although water may be used, the drink is typically some traditional alcohol stroke wine. Long live Ghana, long live Costa Rica, long live Oh, and she did remember me. Oh my goodness. For the welcoming, for me as a, as a woman of African descent, it's so important to be here in Ghana. My heart is, it, it is plenty of love because I feel that I come back to my motherland. The two most powerful women right now in Ghana who have arrived. You know, they are so happy to be in the motherland. We've shown them culture. And now the four days begins.
Yes, I'm yes. ready. Good. Good. This is Mr. Oh, Anabe. Uh, He's one part one of now. the Ghana Tourism Authority. Yeah, so yeah. They, they arranged the trip that we're going to now. The Du Bois Centre is a memorial centre of Pan-African culture, a memorial place, a research facility and a tourist attraction in Cantonment. The centre is to commemorate the late W.E.B. Du Bois. It was a place him and his wife lived and they both got buried. Ambassador Dr. Erica Bennett is the conveying founder and head of mission at the Diaspora African Union, DAF. Thank you very much for, for us uh, and for me as a member of the Permanent Forum of Republican Center. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here and to be here with you all. And uh, thank you for inviting me as a part of the diaspora, as, as, we, as we are all over the world. Thank you very much. I would like to share that as a younger student at Harvard University, and I'm sure Lee Boyce took it upon herself to meet with anti-apartheid activists. And there, she counseled us to be aware of our African heritage, to learn African languages, and also to assure that in our carriage and in our uh, endeavors, wherever life is going to take us, to remember that Africa is our homeland. This is called a supporters wall. These are people and organizations who have supported us. And we're so honored to have your name there and your name there. So what we're going to do is unveil this first. She's supporting yes, us. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Uh -huh. And then we have Her Excellency. Thank you very much. And um, as I said, this is actually, this is exactly when we opened the wall, uh, the mission. We did our mission in 2007. This wall, again, is not a supportive wall. We put you on the big wall. Oh, uh, well, thank you. We, we have people on the show. We have um, Ali Missouri. We oh, have really? the Obamas. The Obamas came here, Sekou and Puma, wow. Ambassador Andrew Young. We have Reverend Jackson, who's on our board as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Within the African Union, there are six regions, North, West, Central, East, Southern Africa, and the sixth region constitutes to the African diaspora. Off we go to Elmina Castle in the central region. Elmina Castle was built by the Portuguese in 1482. It was the first trading post built on the Gulf of Guinea and the oldest European building in existence south of the Sahara. There are two reasons why they built this. First, to trade in gold, ivory and others, and then two, give out rooms for the missionaries who were to come in to spread Christianity. And when they came at first, they were Catholics. From the beginning when they were into gold and ivory and others, the rooms on the ground floor were being used as store rooms or warehouses. But from the 1500s, it shifted from gold and others to human trade. And when that got started, the store rooms we had were then converted to holding places where the Africans were kept. And at the peak of it, the whole structure could talk of a minimum of a thousand at a time. A thousand. a thousand minimum at a time. 
600 of them were men, 400 were women. That's 60%. I thought that is uh, less women, but it's 40%. 40% women. So the structure standing is 540 years now. Wow. 540. The Portuguese had it 155 years. The Dutch had it 235 years. English had it for 85 years. And Ghana, the last group, now 65. We passed by the door of no return, a small tunnel that leads through the walls of the castle and out to the boats. Whenever the governor wanted, because of his position, the story says, up on the balcony he stood and ordered. The women were brought up from the dungeons all round to the courtyard. From there, he just looked through and then made his choice. This woman chosen could have been in the dungeons for a whole month. Then up on the stairs over here, we call it the private access to the governor's bedroom. This chosen woman was then taken to the governor. Please, help. Yes. Up on these stairs, through a door on top, we call it a trap door. The woman chosen was taken to the governor. After the governor had used her, she was brought back to the dungeons. Instances, the story will suggest that before she came back, she could have been used by some other guys also. Some very few became mistresses and they stayed longer. Many a times when people get to this place, the first thing you see them do will be to cover their noses. But I do tell them, no matter how bad it will smell today, is nothing to be compared to what was happening back then. A month or two they were held in here and never allowed out until the time the governor wanted to pick one to be raped. Over here also they were not allowed to wash down and women some had to go through their menstrual periods and still be sleeping in it. You seriously cannot underestimate the heat and the stench. And these among others explains why they were dying. And those that died were thrown into the sea. Sad moments, our ancestors went through so much, so much pain. We pulled up to Asin Manso place where our slaves had their last bath the place
yourself and myself and in order to bring our power as Africans in order to rule the world. We don't want you to come here and go as the same version of yourself. We want you to go as a better version of yourself. So whilst you are here, we'll be taking all the past away. Try to ask yourself if you could... that you do, release something that you don't want to hold on to any longer. So after the wash, we believe we've been cleaned by our ancestors. Cleansing away the pain, washing away the negativity. After seeing and after hearing, the most important thing is what comes out of your mouth because it can make or break you. So you baptize the mouth, you touch the mouth and you pray that may our mouth be open. So wherever we speak as Africans, people will rush and listen to us, manifest it because that is why we are here. Then when you're done with all this manifestation, I'm going to give you a coin. And with a coin, put all your wishes on this. I want you to put timelines to it. When you're done with your wishes, just throw the coin in the river. The reason why you're throwing the coin is because you are saying to your ancestors, you've already said thank you. So they don't have anything than to do whatever you ask for. And whenever your wishes come to pass, buy yourself a bottle of rum and just pour on the ground and say to your ancestors, you thank them for the rules they played in our lives. Coconut Grove Beach Resort has become an important landmark in Elamina, in the town with so much history and heritage. After Elmina Castle, we headed straight to the Akwemufie in the eastern region of Ghana, one of the beautiful destinations for tourism, where there's a lot of beautiful locations, such as the Royal Senchi and Bridgeview. The Omai Hine of Akwemu, Odenehu Kwafu Akutu III, acknowledging the presence of the Vice President of Costa Rica and the Executive Director of the UNFPA, Dr. Natalie Kanim. Rituals were performed. As we cleanse the spirit, we cleanse the soul and also satisfy you holy thanking the divinity for bringing you back home safely. We thank 
Joe Maiji for the life of the Vice President of Costa Rica. Noho Akwemu Akoto III, the King of Akwemu, had been a guest at Costa Rica the year before. The Queen Mother of Akwemu traditional area, Nana Afrakoma II, who happens to be the King's mother, also graced the occasion. <laughs> Akwemo is also known to be a popular place where the former Secretary General of the United Nations held Kofi Annan. The King sat in state and a cultural display began. The Vice President of Costa Rica, Her Excellency Epsi Campbell Barr, was renamed Nanahema Ya Puahema Frakuma. <laughs> This name is indeed a significant name in the Akomu state because we share the same name with the common Queen Mother of the Akomu traditional area. So as what we shall be called Nanya Yabuama Afra. So you are being purified and sanctified as for go and present yourself as Nanya yeah, Kwama Afra Kwama. For FC Alexandra Campbell Bar, on the occasion of her investiture as Ohima Ya Kwama Afra Kuma of the Royal State of Akumu, in recognition of her contributions to promoting Africa's history and heritage. The last stop of the trip was where I got to present Nanaya Santwa Awards to these great women who unfortunately couldn't make the awards which happened in November of 2021. Guba Enterprise is a social enterprise organisation dedicated to the advancement of diaspora Africans and Africans back home through various social economic programmes and initiatives and the Google Awards happened to be celebrating a hundred years of Namaya Santwa, which these women represented. The event, which was themed celebrating a symbol of courage and resilience, also recognized other women in Africa for their contribution as black women in the diaspora and Africa. <laughs> The 
The keynote speaker for the event was the Vice President of Ghana, His Excellency, Dr. Amomudu Baumia. Welcome, with a resounding round of applause, the one gentleman who has boldly taken on the responsibility of being a women's advocate earnestly. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, Dr. Mahamudu Bawumia. On behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Akufuad, let me extend an official hearty welcome to my sisters, Her Excellency S.P. Kambalba, Vice President of Costa Rica, as well as Dr. Natalia Kanin, the UN Under Secretary General and Executive Director of the UNFPA. On behalf of Ghana, I say a big aquaba. People of African descent have a story only they can tell. It's an honor and a privilege to be here this morning because last year in August, I had the privilege of being part of the UNFPA to go to Costa Rica where I met the first female black vice president of Costa Rica. That alone gives me chills. That alone recognizes that our daughters can one day be a president of a country. What did Yasantua represent? Yasantua was a warrior. She was a politician. She was a farmer. She was a go-getter. She was somebody that stood in front of the men and said, I will fight. We will fight. And these two women, in every day of their lives, keep fighting. Representation matters. The Vice President and Dr. Kanim were given new names. Obatampa Ajua Otribia. That is Dr. Kanim. Philanthropy is rewarding yet challenging feat. It calls for selflessness and passion as a long-standing philanthropist. Dr. Kanim has shown grace and dedication to her craft. She is an example of a visionary and the world needs more women like you. Nana Hima Ya Bwamwa Afrakuma is the new name for the Vice President. As the first black woman to be elected as Vice President in Costa Rica, you have demonstrated to women around the world that possibility of their dreams. You have shown that any dream can be achieved. So congratulations. I should say, your hands are as soft as the sparkling moon. Giving is in your genius. Lifting up of the destitute is your prime goal. Her Excellency, you are a true representation of the ego. You saw higher. You never idle. You wobble into the sky's feather as you tame hearts forever with the soothing melodies ever from a flute of a nightingale. Her Excellency, I will eat your kara if I is a chair on my or Sunday. Who come up for you a trading upon your cooker? I give you, Nami in shrug and keep soaring higher. grateful to my sister, Dr. Natalia Kanem, for arranging and making this visit possible, the return mission. I also thank the president, Nana Akufu Ado, and you, Vice President, and this government for this extraordinary opportunity to be here, like you. I'm a descendant and daughter of Africa, specifically from Nigeria, Mali, Benin, Togo, 
Ivory Coast and Ghana. And, and I also have in my blood the imprint of Cameroon, Congo, and Bantu people of the West. And we are behind the doors of no return, and today we are building the bridge and the doors of reunification with history, with the present, with our future. I feel at home because I'm at home. I recognize in my origins, my feelings, how my black skin brides and my heart beats before the energy of my ancestors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.